Welcome to Simply Caroline, a podcast dedicated to women empowerment where we will discuss a bunch of different subjects such as life, parenting, love, business, money, relationships, healing, recovery, addiction, entrepreneurship, and so much more. A podcast I'll do my best to keep simple, fun, and relatable and bring you tools to help you better your life. So thank you for being here. And here's your host, myself, Caroline Blanchard. Hello, everyone, and thank you for being with us again this week. We have an amazing author that wrote a great book that you have to go get and, uh, you know, read for yourself. Mariana Cadore, how are you? Thank you. I'm delighted to be here, Caroline. My pleasure. It's an honor to have you. So, Mariana, you launched your book last month, and we have the privilege to have you to discuss that book. What's the title of that book? <laughs> it's F, The Diet. There is a splash in there, so you can continue this F as you wish. I mean, forget the diet and uh, how to get out of the roller coaster and lose uh, one kilogram per week. Um, and, you know, feel free to complete the F as you want. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll complete it with a word that I can I won't say on the podcast, just in case there's kids. But let's go with forget just, you know, for the purpose of today. So, yeah, forget the diet before the podcast. Uh, I was thinking about it and I feel like I've always been on a diet, but I've never been on a diet because I don't do diets. I'm against diets. But basically, I thought today, like, how far back did I started being self-conscious of my weight? And it's pretty much when I was 14 and I had a boyfriend. Yes, people, it was too young for a boyfriend. So side note, close. <laughs> Since then, it's pretty much, uh, I always felt like I had five to 10 pounds to lose. No matter what my weight was, like I fluctuated a lot. I had three kids in all of that time. Um, you know, I'm not 20 anymore. I'm approaching my 50, my 50s. So but when I think about it, I always had five to 10 pounds to lose. So I'm thinking like, am I normal? <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely. Um, most of the women, especially, come to me and they just can look in what they think is faulty on their bodies. I have too much fat here. I have a flappy arms. I have a, they look and hate themselves on that. And um one of my tasks is really change the view to like, what do you love on yourself? And what is the most beautiful part of yourself? And some will come with weird things like uh, my wrist. That's the only thing because they hating so much the rest. And they even say like, that's the skinniest part of my body. And so mm -hmm. this journey is really to lead them, to empower them to know how beautiful they are and um, how wonderful they are and how much um, we lose time thinking we're not good enough, not pretty enough uh, in this way. I have many clients that is over 60 or 70 even, and they look, oh, Mariana, I was so pretty in my 20s, 30s, 40s, and I thought I was so fat or so ugly. Now I look at the pictures, I was just perfect. And so this happened the whole time. And it's really, uh, we can change this in a second if we start to work towards this goes. It's funny because you said that and there's a song that just came to mind and there's a few written on that subject. Like you don't know what you have until you lose it, mm. you know, and usually it's, it's a love, it's in love songs, but it's the same thing with everything. It's like, we need to get older and, um, you know, change <laughs> to realize, hey, back then that wasn't too bad. Like I, I know that I have pictures that now I'm looking at and I'm like, oh my gosh, I looked good. But I remember in the moment having that picture taken when I was 20 or 30, I was just like, oh, my hair wasn't good. I looked fat, blah, 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 blah. And to the point that my kids know, they don't even take pictures of me, <laughs> you know, because they're like, oh, you're just going to complain about something. 
But uh, so now my, my trick, ladies, for all of you, take pictures and don't look at them. Look at them in 10 years. But now, you know, I do take pictures of myself and everything, and then I don't look at them. I'm like, I'll wait till I'm 60, and I will think like I was hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, we're kind of laughing at this subject, but it's it's quite sad because it's a pressure that especially women we have and a huge part I feel comes from society because I know Mariana you're from Brazil and like I'm from Canada just right there the ideal body for a woman in Brazil and the ideal one for a woman in Canada is different so it's not like there's one type of you should be like this it's what we choose to portray as a society that we should be mm. what do you have to say about that <laughs> yeah no but that's exactly right i had some clients for example from china and they they say to me i'm so fat and i, I look them they so skinny uh, but for their culture they think they are so fat that's uh, like the the extreme i see is in um in asians is they really want to get really really skinny uh, and that's cultural. Um, I think once you start to love yourself, and um, I do a, basically a journey with my clients to to them to walk, to don't have to pass 20 years for them to appreciate themselves now, but to bring them to in this moment to love themselves. And then they start to realize which body would I like to have? And if it is different than what is right now, it's okay. We can work and basically we can get any shape we want in the body, uh, certain constraints of uh, structure, but basically we can work towards any shape independent of genetics or anything. But the most important is you loving yourself every single day independent of your weight you work the same with weight more weight less weight uh it doesn't really matter you're beautiful the way you are and worth but i always think is um we need to work to have a really healthy body and um and love what we see it and if that gonna means that you wanna get uh, more strong or lose a little bit of your belly fat that's fine but we start today loving yourself um certain things we we want the ideal that we have in our minds uh, so then we work for it until we can change this ideal or just accept that's that's great yes and it's so much easier said than done <laughs> you know because i you know i i've improved so much in the last 10 years but I remember days where I absolutely hated myself. Like I was my own worst enemy. And now that I'm thinking about it, you know, maybe I was a bit skinnier, maybe I was more in shape, but I was not fun to be around because mm. I was resenting all of that. And I was mad, basically, you know, you see a big piece of chocolate cake and you're like, oh, I just worked out an hour. Am I going to just, you know, erase it all because you're only thinking about weight. And actually, I like how the new generation is. Like if I look at my daughters, they both work out um, because they want to be strong. It's it's not about necessarily the body image. It's like now strong is the new pretty, you know, they want to have muscles. They want to be able to lift. And I find that beautiful because it's not based just on the image of something. Because like we said, the image can be highly <laughs> influenced by culture. So it depends on where you are in the world. But basically, Mariana, in your book, you also talk about, you know, there's something way deeper into how we feel about ourselves. Like you were talking about family earlier. You were talking about how you interpret love and all of that. And that's what I, I like about your book. It's not about a diet. <laughs> it's not about like work out more, eat less calorie. We all know that. We all know that, you know, uh, put less in and more out. We know that. And it's not fun. It's just not fun. <laughs> you know, that's not how life should be. But talk about the different principles that you share in your book. So, for, for example, 
sometimes um, the person can be trying so hard to do a diet and just feel like a failure. Uh, one of the things they can be doing is this regulating the hormonal system. And so every time they go in diet, become way harder to lose any weight, even if they eat the same thing as before. And they can dysregulate you up to six years in a one crazy diet. Yeah, so they put more weight than before. Uh, the other thing is um, the gut health. Sometimes it's just an imbalance of bacteria on your gut and, and become very hard for you to lose weight. And so there is all these things in between that should be addressed. If you are highly stressed, probably your cortisol levels go up to the roof. Well, the body will try to uh, save you for survival. So it won't allow you to lose weight. It will keep it more. So you survive this war that the body is understanding. Mm. But the other thing that I love so much to talk, it is um, we are always trying to avoid pain and trying to reach pleasure. And many times we learn that uh, the time with family, which we feel is love, was around food. And so we, when we're chasing for love, we go towards this food. But the food doesn't hold the love, so we keep eating. So um, it's still this correlation of, uh, I'm going to get at what we want, but this is not conscious. You keep chasing the food to get this love that you are chasing, but that's not the source, really. And so it's very important to be addressing the root cause and, uh, and not just to be depriving people. They are read um, guilty when they think they have more weight. They are read uh, hating their bodies. They are read, if I say they, they, they are doing something else wrong, I'm not of any help. And if I give something that is, uh, is basically unachievable, because if you say to me, um, don't eat this and that, I probably, all I can think is this and that. And like, you know, I'm going to break it. You give me three, three days and I'm going to eat way more than I possibly would eat if you don't say don't eat this. I love my food and I love my freedom. So there is a better way and lighter way to approach your health, your weight, your life, which is with joy and driving you towards this self-love drive you towards making great decisions. Absolutely. And that's what you're sharing in your book, really, the, the journey of getting on self-love. And um, yeah, diet should be banned from the vocabulary. Yes. Um, it's funny because I am following a diet right now, and it took me uh, years to understand that that's the one that I should follow. But I hate the fact that it's called a diet mm -hmm. because it's not uh, restrictive. It's just like it's called the FODMAP diet for anyone who has IBS. Uh, I shared that with a few friends and they were like, oh, thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that because it's not about the calories or the food or whatever. It's about what your body tolerates and not. And it's usually people with IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome won't tolerate the type of uh, food that is in the FODMAP. So it's a type of fructose and it's a type, some types of sugar that we don't digest, uh, like perhaps watermelon. I never understood why I would bloat and not feel good. <laughs> um, and watermelon is healthy. So I was just like, well, I can eat as much as I want, but I was feeling horrible after. But it took me a while to really connect the dots that it's a watermelon that was doing that. But in that diet, it's simple. You look at it and it says, you do not digest watermelon. <laughs> so I stopped the watermelon. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my point to all of this, that was really a side note. But my point to all of this is that I don't like the fact that it's called a diet because for me, it has a very negative connotation. For me, diet is restrictive. It's negative. It's uh, frowned upon, <laughs> you know, because people will be like, ugh. Why are you on the diet? Um, but anyway, so Mariana, I want to ask you, because I do know your story a bit, and I, I really want you to share your story on what brought you 
to write this type of book and say enough is enough with the diets love yourself instead yes yeah, so um what you just told about uh, the food map is where i'm gonna begin to to tell my story so in this moment when you discover this diet you discover you basically eliminate a few things on your diet and you start to feel the reaction of your body through these kinds of food and then you discover what was bad for you and what was good so you connected yourself with your body and um, you connected for this moment it doesn't mean the entire life you cannot eat watermelon mm. so you got to a point really good that you start to understand your body I start in my life with uh, um, my mother as a physical trainer and uh, me going into like exercising and trying to be a model and um, and stop eating. So I just stop eating and I become anorexic. Um, I was um, 54 kilograms at the time. Uh, so that's very skinny uh, for my height and um and i was just bones and <laughs> and skin at this point and i was in a class biology class i was pretty young 15 and uh, the teacher was measuring the heart rate to see uh, for certain things that he was doing that day and uh, he measured my heart rate and was 32 so i i realized that um i was dying Aren't you was, supposed to be dead at 32? <laughs> I don't know. I was not dead, but I was uh, I was really, really low. So that day gave me a shock. And uh, the teacher never know the importance of him in my life. But this day I went back home and I told my mother, um, let's go for how you can eat restaurant today, please. And she, yes, let's go. <laughs> she quite didn't understood. But I start to eat quite a lot from then onwards and my heart rate improved. So I start being very fearful of diets in that. But after this, I got uh, sick and, um, and I had to take cortisone. And um, I, I already put weight at this point. And then in six months, I ballooned 18 kilos in six months. So I went to the other side and, um, and uh, it was just the same coin, two sides different, but the same problem. The issue with food was there. Um, even though cortisone was part of the problem, I was eating for other sources uh, to fill up other sources of emptiness on myself. Mm. And, uh, and then I, I really discovered how people can, for example, with anorexia, look themselves and feel they are so fat and uh, and when you put weight you can look yourself and also feel so fat it doesn't matter where you are you still can look and uh, just hate what you see it but um you feel like you don't have control over yourself to stop this uh, but you do you do have control and I had to be completely sick um, after a time. I start to roll a lot with guilt of what I ate. Basically, that's what transformed me in a high level <laughs> professional rower because I ate and I felt so guilt. I would exercise so much and this would go on. Um, so I was making my way to the Olympic Games and um, and I had fibromyalgia, which again it stopped me and it stopped my whole career and who I knew myself as a human being was this incredible athlete. And now I couldn't do any of those things. And I had to understand myself and try to heal myself because 20 doctors told I had no, no healing, there is no solution for me. And they just gave me pills that let me as a as a zombie as how I felt without emotions without I just felt like uh, now I don't have any energy but I also don't have emotions I don't feel like a human being I, I'm gonna have to heal myself because um 
at 21 years old, I cannot give up my life like this. Mm. And so I I went in this journey of um, self-healing and self-discover. And that's where I really understood um, the suffering of human beings and um, what was the things behind in the background that led me to eat too little or too much. And uh, I had to understand myself deeply. Um, and that's what uh, I think was the best thing if ever happened in my life. I, I would not ask it to have, but all of this led me to really understand human beings and the pain and where they are at and uh, being able to serve as my mission in serving people with the same um, issue as I had in the past. That's beautiful. And, you know, I'm sorry you went through this, but it did make you stronger and it did open doors to, uh, you know, a different life. And by at the same on the same token, it's also helping a lot of people because a lot of people, you know, enjoy your book and get healing from you and consulting and coaching. So that's really you know, it's powerful that you turned that around and decided to serve. Um, and when I listen to you, you know, I, I can't stop thinking like how sad it is that we do these things to ourselves um, because this is like an addictive personality, whether it be with food or the lack of food, like not eating at all is also an addictive personality. You're just like addicted to being skinny, um, you know, so some people that don't have this in them cannot understand how you can push yourself to get there. But quite often the person, well, I say quite often, I'm pretty sure it's like 98% of the time, the person doing it doesn't know either mm -hmm. that they're doing that to themselves. Mm -hmm. So there, there need to be an awareness on that. You know, I think that we use some terms very lightly sometimes like anorexia, but it, it is a fatal disease. You know, it yes. can really push you to the extremes and just to maybe all self assess, like, what am I doing in my life that is, I want to say harmful, but then we would not necessarily have the answer, but be mindful of what we're doing because some mm -hmm. things we do is not a healthy, like healthy choices. Like, do you have some people that come to you and say, what's wrong with me? Oh, the majority thinks they are um, that there is something wrong with them, and there is nothing wrong. We're just human beings, and so many times we don't know how to deal with ourselves and our emotions. Uh, we end up focusing in uh, in the family, in the business, in whatever life is calling us, but stop ourselves a little bit to do this journey of self discovery and self-love is something that we think is a time we can't afford, but it's the most <laughs> well-used time you can have in your life, is to do this journey of self-love. And, and other than this, um, it's not helping us that how the marketing and the society is dealing, putting food really toxic, um, in our hands for a very cheap price and healthy food in a very expensive way mm -hmm. and not very available. So it's, um, there is part that is, uh, is really you not know, your fault until you discover that, like, well, you cannot go through what everybody is doing. There is an epidemic of obesity going on. We need to do things different than the status quo to get different results. And this is um, really stopping a little bit and bringing these tools for the people so they can have better choices. And once they understand, they connect with their selves, it becomes quite easy. It's just um, self-love is, is a journey. It's not a one-day task. It's a journey that we lead people through and I, I lead people through my reset method because what I want is to reset people. There is no baby that uh, look themselves in the mirror and like, I hate my body. Look how fat I am. 
they just love themselves <laughs> so much and they're just happy with whatever and they, if they white black or whatever they love everybody and they love everybody they didn't have this society input until then on them so it's a, it's really resetting you and uh, like you're beautiful independent of anything that society puts on your brain that is not good enough independent of anything you've done in this life you are forgiven to whatever you've done and now you can do different from now onwards but we cannot change the past so resetting and have a new canvas to paint on and it's just beautiful and a wise decision to to live fully and empower people I wish it was as simple as having that preset button you know, <laughs> and just click it uh, because, well, I've been doing a lot of, you know, self-work and personal development, especially in the last 10 years. And I can say that I'm like so much better with myself than I was before, but I still have those moments. And honestly, I don't know, well, maybe besides you, but I don't know anyone who doesn't have those moments of like, ugh. You know, like when we put up make put on makeup or whatever, we'll feel great. But uh, getting up on a Sunday morning after not sleeping enough, going to the groceries, you're not going to be like, I I look so cute. <laughs> you know, you're just like, oh my gosh. Or how many of my friends that I think they're gorgeous and they're like, look at my neck, look at this, look at that. So even if in general they're loving themselves, we always have those little things that you know we like to. I'll take the B word that we like to be about. So, um, but it it is like, it's funny because it's been on my dream board probably forever and people don't understand when they see it, but it's happy and free. And yeah. I am happy and I am free by the way. But, you know, for me, like pure happiness will get to the point that on that Sunday morning, when I'm on my way to the grocery store, I'll be like, whoa, looking good, girl. <laughs> you know, that for me is going to be like when I'm, that will reach the, the, the summum of happiness and, and self-love. And I'm not sure if I'll ever get there. I'm on the, the amazing journey of getting there. But it is something that we all thrive for, whether we do it consciously or not. Do you have like simple steps yes. or like simple takeaways that we can start today to implement on ourselves that will really help us? I will, I will give a very simple um, exercise. It's practical and doesn't take more than two minutes of your day. But, you know, for everything good in your life, you need to put a little bit of effort you're going to receive tons more than you are putting in, but you need to do something because uh, we learned that we can take pills and that will solve our problems. That will mask our problems. So I will give you an exercise. It will take two minutes of your day, but you're going to get these rewards. So I like when I wake up, I go to the mirror and I look into my eyes. And then I see, say three things that I'm proud about. So I just say like uh, anything, it's really anything. And then you say three things that you forgive yourself of. And let just flow, don't judge anything, whatever it is. And then I say three things that I commit myself with. And then I have a wonderful day. It doesn't matter if in the next day I do every day and I look deeply on my eyes. If you miss it, this, go on your phone, turn like if you were to take a selfie and keep looking into your eyes to do this because you're gonna talk with your soul and that will be powerful. And then before you go to sleep, I would like to you to look in the mirror and say one body part that you like. That's it. It can be whatever. If you say my ears, my eyebrow, whatever, that's beautiful. But we start to train yourself to look in what you love. Because um, 
sometimes it's just the focus we have and the questions we do it that we need to change. And sometimes it's, it's just so simple, but you learn to create a habit of looks for fault and you keep going. You haven't renewed your software. And sometimes someone cross you and give you this invitation and you take or not. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny because I can't find the other word that really is appropriate for that. But we've also learned to, when you get compliments, well, I'm good at that, to uh, diffuse them. Like you're like, um, you know, nice shirt. Oh, this thing, I had that for 10 years, <laughs> you mm. know, or all oh, your hair is nice today. You're like, oh, really, it didn't, you know, it's always downplaying the compliments that we get. And, you know, there's one thing that I'm, I've always been very hard at receiving compliments because I can argue it with you and I will win the argument. But now it's like, it's a conscious choice to stop talking and just say, thank you. And believe me, I bite my tongue and sometimes it almost bleeds, but it's just to say thank you and just to take it, you know? is uh, yeah you say that everything in there and um an easy way i would say to you is uh, imagine caroline as a little kid and uh, imagine you are your daughter and someone say something to your daughter and um usually kids take the compliments very well and even increase like uh, i saw one boy the other day and uh, and i thought do you play soccer Yes, I play soccer. And I thought, are you fast? I'm so fast. <laughs> I love that kids have this thing. I'm the fastest one. I'm the most powerful one. I'm the most pretty one. And, and we lose this. So when someone say like, you look pretty, and by the way, you look very pretty, Caroline. Thank you. Would you deflect <laughs> this and say, if, if you imagine yourself as little Caroline, would you allow big Caroline to say like, no, we're not. You wouldn't, isn't it? No. So if you, if you think yourself as a kid or something like this, how would you act? Because I see people saying like, oh, is this stupid me? Or, and so just think yourself as a kid and protect this kid and accept it like a kid would. Because at the end of the day, we just can go forward if our heart is like kids' heart, isn't it? And if we start to shift and think like, oh, Carolina being so good for me so far, little Mariana being so good and with me so far, I'm going to treat well. You're absolutely right. And it's funny you said that, and I was thinking about my daughter, you know, when someone compliments her and my kids the three of them but <laughs> it's because the two older ones are too old and it's not cool if i see something so <laughs> and even the young one it's not that cool anymore she's turning 14 but you know i know that when they make it when they compliment them i'll just add to it like let's say oh she's so pretty i know and did you see her eyes <laughs> yes <laughs> you know? it's like i I add to it. And yes, that's one thing that I've learned too. It's like, treat yourself like you treat your kid. And if you don't have any, well, as the kid you were. So Mariana, what would you leave uh, our listeners with? I mean, you gave so many good gold nuggets, but what would you leave them with that one thing to uh, really work on or not forget? I think for today, really to embrace all the message you will pass here is look yourself in the mirror and kind of give yourself a hug and say like, you done so well, you're so good. You, you've been so far from where you start to now, you've done so many wonderful decisions, so many great things, whatever else you needed, we're going to get there. We know we're going to get there. That's so awesome. Awesome. And, you know, I'll give a little tip of mine um, because I, I did create a planner, little plug here that I'm putting in, but um, I found it so important to put in the planner two pages, 
well, there's a few different ones, but those two, I really want them in, wanted them in. And that was for me, basically, one is your list of achievements. So write your list of achievements, not just the ones you did today, the one you did in the past. Because, you know, sometimes we all had those moments. Like if, let's say me, it could be that I gave birth. <laughs> like it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, necessarily just business or whatever. Um, it could be that you learn how to read, write, draw. We all, we all have accomplished things in our life. And we tend to forget it and we tend to focus just on what happened today or the feeling that we have now. So I wanted that page in that planner because that's the page for the rainy days. You know, when you don't feel good, you go see what have I done up until now? And believe me, we would need to add like 10 pages if we would really write all of the achievements. And then the other one is a page of your qualities and strengths. And I suggest to people to start their list on their own. But if you're like me and you have a hard time complimenting yourself, well, let's say today Mariana said you look pretty, Caroline. I would go in it and I would write pretty without questioning if she's right or not. Just write it. Uh, if she would be like, you're good at math, I would go put that in my strength. But basically, that's another page for your rainy, rainy days. So whether you have that planner or not, you can start those two pages like on your own and really um, keep them as your cheerleaders. <laughs> so when it's not a good day, you look at your cheerleaders and, um, and stay healthy and stop dieting, really. Just be healthy. Uh, Mariana Cadore, uh, thank you so much for being here. Go get our book, F the Diet, and I will put all of Mariana's information with the podcast. And to everyone here this week, thank you so much for being here. And Mariana, thanks again. Thank you so much.